So patch 10.11 is out today on North America, so that means Schlieffen is available. And if you want to see that, you can come check out my stream. I think the Twitch is linked in the description down below. I'll be live around uh, 1 o'clock, I gotta say, sometime in the afternoon, and that's uh, central time in North America. So if you want to see that, um, I might be playing Schlieffen, or I'll be playing a destroyer or something else if I am get tilted about a battleship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I'm pretty hyped for Schlieffen, so I hope to make that a good stream where we have a good time just pushing in, trying to brawl, that kind of thing. Probably see some highlights of that on this channel in the coming days. But before then, I want to talk about the Marco Polo. Somewhat amusingly, this ship got a buff last patch now, and I didn't take a look at it in the entire time that, uh, the, entire time that the last patch was out. And I feel like that's a bit of an issue. I should have definitely given it a bit of the time of day that it deserves now that it has 1.9 Sigma, I believe. And that seems like a pretty small buff, but it actually surprisingly makes a pretty big difference. And it really does come down to the sap on this ship being just incredibly strong. And then of course having Sansonetti allowing you to swap to AP when you know things call for it. This is a very solid ship now. I think the entire Italian battleship line really does suffer these days since it was tested and balanced in the Deadeye meta. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some Sigma buffs coming to the entire line. Uh, that wouldn't surprise me at all, just given that some of the time those ships are comically inaccurate. It's, it's kind of unbelievable these days. But the Marco Polo being the first one to receive a Sigma buff it's very interesting to play now. I think it's to the point where the strengths of this ship do warrant playing it. I'm not sure about buying it uh, since it's kind of expensive for either resources or real money, but the 406 millimeter sap is very unique since it does get you over a few thresholds like allowing you to citadel a minotaur with the sap where the 380 mil sap on the main line actually can't do that. So. Some funny things can happen there, but really what it comes down to with this ship is you're kind of a big target and you don't have a lot of HP for tier nine. The armor is decent, but I find that this ship takes a little bit more damage than the mainline Italian battleships just because it sits so much higher out of the water. It's kind of hard to tell with this ridiculous camo I have on right now, but it sits much higher out of the water than a ship like Roma does or especially something like the Lepanto, which sits pretty low in the water. So it takes a little bit more damage. It doesn't have the smoke screen, right? So you're not having that Italian gimmick of the fuel smoke that allows you to get out of bad situations. It allows you to play very aggressively and make use of the closer range nature of these battleships. So the Marco Polo is in a bit of an odd spot where you trade off a lot of your survivability, a lot of your HP, to get these big guns. And you trade off the number of guns too, since you only get nine, whereas the mainline Lepanto, of course, gets 12. And that's why I didn't really recommend this ship in the past. I thought it was kind of just a mediocre ship, and I didn't like it. But this patch helps. I think Deadeye, what made this ship somewhat enjoyable when you were activating Deadeye, but unfortunately, what that did is it forced you to play at the back. I think we all uh, can remember how everybody was camping the back of the map, trying to stay uh, out of concealment range, right? They're wanting to stay dark so they can activate their Deadeye buff. This change, however, is an accuracy buff across the board. And it means that a ship like Marco Polo can have that improved dispersion, since the Sigma has been improved, at closer ranges. And I think that's really where this ship shines. It's a little difficult to get into those closer range scenarios since uh, you don't have those fuel smokes and the HP like I mentioned earlier. But once you're there, the ship is really, really strong. The sap hits very hard, not on DDs. I'll talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> but the sap hits really hard. It's very consistent against cruisers, battleships. It feels very good. I feel like I can rely on these guns again. And that's so nice. That is so, so nice. It's one of the biggest issues I have with the Italian battleships. The ammo type of sap being so ridiculously strong that they had to nerf the ship to being just a dice roll every time you shoot the guns. 
in order to balance it. Because if you made the guns incredibly accurate, it'd be flat out OP. Just because SAP combines the consistency of high explosive, you know, you're not getting overpens ever with this stuff, with the alpha of AP. So you, you can't make it too consistent. Uh, but it's nice to see this little buff. I think Marco Polo, if you have it, it's definitely worth playing. Um, I'm sorry I didn't actually take a look at it sooner to let you guys know. And coming into Christmas and potentially getting some steel and some coal from the uh, snowflakes, that kind of thing, depending on which tier of ships you're playing, maybe you get enough resources to get this ship. I think it's definitely a worthy pickup. I think it's a better pickup than something like the Palmern. That's a ship that I really wouldn't recommend these days, since the Battlecruiser line is just better than it at this point. Um, Palmern suffers from some other issues as well, but uh, there's six sap shells into a DD at close range, and we don't get them. Our secondaries are going to open up and end up finishing them off, but it's pretty frustrating hitting that many shells into a DD at close range and really not being able to kill them. That's kind of the issue with SAP. You don't have the HE to swap to. Um, of course, if you swap to HE, sometimes you're gonna hit the modules on a ship and it's gonna deal very little damage or the saturation will mean little damage. So battleships against destroyers at close range are in a bit of an odd spot. It's one of the very valuable parts about having secondaries. It's really one of the main things that deters destroyers just yellowing you. But again, one of the reasons why I'm very excited for the Schlieffen. I can't wait to play that ship tomorrow. I guess today, for those of you watching it, um, I'm stuck here in the past in patch 10.10. <laughs> but back to the Marco Polo, really a solid ship these days. I am really glad to see that they've taken a look at this ship again and allowed it to get a little bit of a buff. We don't see buffs on pretty high alpha ships very often. Usually, they end up getting nerfed. And, you know, for good reasons, ships like Thunderer, right? They're pretty oppressive to play against when a ship is so consistent at doing so much damage. But a ship like the Marco Polo, I'm glad they ended up changing it. I don't know if it's the ship for everyone. I don't think it's going to be a meta battleship anytime soon. I think the one you wanna wait for, if you're thinking, oh, Marco Polo might be interesting, I think you want to wait for the alternate version that's coming out soon that has SAP secondaries. That'll be the first Italian battleship with SAP secondaries. So they get the secondaries like Napoli, where finally the 90 millimeter secondary turrets can pen 26 millimeters of armor, I believe. So they'll actually be somewhat useful. No um, accuracy buffs on those secondaries. So they're not going to be like Napoli with how incredibly accurate those are without really taking any upgrade skills since... You really can't take any upgrade skills on Napoli, but uh, they'll still be fun to use. And I think they have some pretty insane secondary DPM as well. Although with that one, you got to remember, you're getting 1.7 or 1.6 Sigma. I, bel I haven't really looked too hard since the ship is still in testing. I don't really like to uh, <laughs> stat check all of those things until the ship's really finalized. That way I can kind of lock it into my brain without having to switch things around. But I think it's the Giuseppe Verdi? I know I'm mispronouncing that, I'm sorry, but uh, I'm very excited to see what that one's like as well, because that might be a different buff we see to the mainline Italian battleships, is them getting SAP secondaries. That's something I think most people were looking for on release of those Italian battleships, and we didn't get it, but potentially with the release of this premium, maybe Wargaming will buff them in that way. Although you gotta be careful if you make them too good, right? then all of a sudden they're gonna be incredibly annoying to play against. So, don't wanna buff them too hard, but I do think the mainline Italian battleships could use some love, much like the Marco Polo could have used some love, and it got it. So, we got a Kraken in this one, 140K, a really solid game, honestly, and a close one, too. You can see the score is still very, very close. I'm loving games like this, where it comes down to the wire and your decisions matter. I've said this a lot, but these are my favorite types of games, and I'm really happy that they still happen every once in a while. So know that that's not all my games, though. <laughs> what I upload to YouTube is not even close to the usual matchmaker that I get or the usual games. So it's not happening all the time. This game certainly has an ability to be very frustrating a lot of the time. So, so I don't play it too often anymore. I've been playing more Battlefield or some other games, but I still really do enjoy this game when it when it's hitting right and it's on the right kind of path where you get these close games where 
Well, it's just fun, right? And obviously, it's nice to win and nice to get a Kraken as well. But Marco Polo, it's a solid ship again, and I'm really happy that they managed to do that. Now, the build I'm running is a bit of an odd one. I don't think that running the close quarters combat and secondaries is necessarily all that good. Uh, but I'm doing it to try and counteract the pretty horrible reload that's on the Columbo at tier 10. That's what this ship, this commander is trained for. Just moved him over to the Marco Polo. Since Sansonetti's buff of range on your first kill is amazing. <laughs> it really does help these Italian ships a lot. It's good on the cruisers and very good on the battleships as well. Fire prevention, concealment, I think that's pretty much necessary. Probably would recommend emergency repair over this. And instead of taking secondaries, probably basic survivability. I think that makes sense, as well as grease the gears and the gun feeder being so fast. Pretty standard, boring build for the Italian battleships, but if you want to spice it up, you can try something like this to try and get those uh, those main gun reloads a little bit quicker. You can see Marco Polo, even with reload mod, is over 30 seconds. So these are pretty slow reloading ships, so you really do notice the improved accuracy that this ship has now. I'm actually going to swap this out right now. I had steering gears, didn't like it. <laughs> I think propulsion will just be a little bit more useful. You already have a decent turning uh, rudder shift time and a really good turning radius. So I think having the extra propulsion will be nice. Main armaments mod, damage control system mod, pretty standard, running spotter plane as well. Marco Polo is pretty solid now, but I wouldn't rush out and buy it yet. Wait for that new clone of this ship with the sap secondaries. I think that might be the one to get if you want a little more fun since it's going to have the sap secondaries and the fuel smoke. So you're going to lose out on the main gun accuracy with that thing, but you're going to get a few gimmicks back. So I think it could be a little bit more fun, a little more interesting. So thank you very much for watching guys. And remember, I might be live right now while you're watching this playing Schlieffen. So I'm very excited. I hope that stream goes well. <laughs> I guess we'll see, right? So have a great rest of your day.